So here we have uh, square root multiplication advanced. So we don't have anything on the outside. You could think of it as an imaginary one if you wanted. And so you do have to multiply outsides with outsides and insides with insides. So three times four is three. And then the inside times the inside there would look like this. Now these are not in their prime factorization forms. So we do have to fix this so that we can write that as prime factorization. Now 24 is eight times three, that guy's prime, four times two, that one's prime, and two times two. So how many twos do I have? I have three twos and then only one three. Okay, and I'm gonna put the dot that's in between these two numbers. And now I'm gonna do the same thing for 75. So that is three times 25, and 25 is five times five, and now I have all of my prime factorizations. So I have one three for 75, and then five squared, right? Because there's two fives. And then lo and behold, these can be put together, right? You can do three, two to the third, and there's two of them now, so I'm gonna add those exponents, and then five squared. Now, you can go back to exponent form, right? So three times two to the three halves, three to the two over two, and five to the two over two. And so what do we get there? We get the three from the very, very front, from the beginning, just carrying along. We get two, three goes into two once, but then you have one left over, which stays as a fraction. Here you have two goes into two once, and here you have two goes into two once. So how does that simplify? Um, anything that does not, no longer have a fraction exponent can all be multiplied together. So this three, this two, this three, and this five no longer have or don't have a fraction exponent. So I can take all of those numbers, oops, three times two times three times five, and I get 90. And then the one factor that has a fraction, I convert it back. So it becomes the square root of two to the power one, but you don't have to write one exponent, right? So then this is the final answer. Now again, I'm pretty sure, let me je check, but I'm pretty sure I could have done this problem in the calculator. However, it's better to get an idea of what's happening behind the scenes because when you throw in variables, you're not gonna just be able to type it in your calculator. See, so I get the same answer. Um, so it's better to understand what's happening and how to simplify radicals so that when they throw in the letters, you can still work on it. You may be able to do the number part in your calculator, but the variable part you will not be able to put in your calculator. Okay, so the same thing goes for 98. 98 is 2 times 49, um, 7 times 7. So that guy is 2 times 7 squared. And then this 3 is hanging out on the outside. And 50 is 2 times 5, and that, or 2 times 25, and that's 5 times 5. So this becomes 2 times 5 squared. Now, if you take this outside number one and that outside number and multiply them together, you get three. If you multiply the insides together, you'll now have two squared, seven squared, and five squared. And this one's easy because we know the square root of two squared is just two. Square root of seven squared is just seven. Square root of five squared is just five. And so if you multiply all of those together, three times two times seven times five, I get 210. And you could have also plugged this in because it is all numbers. You could have plugged all of that in your calculator like I did the first problem and it still would have given you the same um, answer. If it doesn't, this is a good way to check, right, to see if you're doing it correctly. So I'd really want you to practice this, yep, C210, just so that you can get the hang of what's happening because I promise you, if these numbers get any bigger, you can do it in the calculator okay the calculator will not go um, that high when it comes to square roots it'll just start popping out decimals and they don't want decimals they want things that look in their exact form okay 
So just get the hang of you this, and then you can always use a calculator to double check that you're getting the ideas right. I'd rather do that than just typing everything in the calculator because it's gonna come a time where you can't, and then you're really gonna be at odds because you don't know how to do it any other way than the calculator.